Notre Dame in white, North Carolina in Carolina blue. Jen Hildreth, Lori Lindsay ready to go from Chapel Hill. So let's love the game from Dorrance Field. And this top 12 ACC showdown points out a premium for these two teams trying to move up the ACC standings. Morgan Roy on the right side of the field for Notre Dame. Meza quickly onto the ball for North Carolina. How much more might the number 10 be involved for the Tar Heels playing a little further up the field? Not a bad idea from Notre Dame in just the opening minute to look to spring Roy on this near side. That's going to be the type of ball that's going to be on for Notre Dame all evening long, especially with the aggressiveness of the two outside backs for North Carolina. That's Della Rose on the left side, Moxley on the right. They will get forward trying to create into the attack. And what do you do when you're trying to bring the ball out of the back if you are Notre Dame? I mean, that is a challenge for every North Carolina opponent because especially teams that like to keep possession, like to try to build, you know you're taking a chance with the type of pressure North Carolina brings. Well, and also the challenge for Nate Norman early on in this game is just to recognize that North Carolina is in a four back. I think they expected North Carolina to be in a three back. We've seen them shift throughout the season. They will even shift throughout this game, I imagine for the Tar Heels. So how does Notre Dame adjust to that in game, but also to start and understand where the space is for them to be able to exploit when they do win the ball and attack? Emily Colton gets it out to Tessa Della Rose, who's been platooning really at that left back spot. Emerson Elgin starts this match on the bench, a bit limited with her minutes tonight, as is Macy Bell on the back line. You notice she's got the sleeve, Macy Bell on the left knee, didn't play in the last match against Wake Forest. Here is Avery Patterson, player you highlighted. Five goals, two assists, loses it. Kiki Van Zanden, a little bit of a deeper role for her tonight, although we know what an offensive threat she can be. Here comes Della Rose for North Carolina. Edge of the area. Talia Della Peruta getting the start, along with her sister Tori up top, number nine. Meza going wide. One well, good glimpse of Meza and why you want her higher up the field to be able to, to conduct play. And you see a good look at Nate Norman. Yeah, what a year the Irish had last year as he was named coach of the year in the ACC. They had an opportunity to win the ACC regular season title, but they drew in their final match of the season. That dropped them down to a third place finish. Still, what a run. Did not concede a goal in the NCAA tournament until that loss to North Carolina in the quarterfinal. And we saw this Notre Dame team last week go on the road and really get manhandled by Florida State. 4-1 the score in that game. Most goals that this Irish team has conceded all season long. They attempted their fewest shots of the season in that match. And when you're a confident team like this Notre Dame team is, sometimes it's hard to change your approach, but it does seem like in our conversations, they realize they might have to do something a little bit different, especially when you do come on the road against these top tier opponents. Well, we mentioned in the open coming into this game about the pragmatic approach for Notre Dame coming into this game. We're gonna see Patterson on this left-hand side. Gets around the corner and cannot get it past the freshman goalkeeper, Atlee Olafson. Well, this is where Patterson is at her best for North Carolina, getting isolated, taking on 1v1 in the wide areas and serving balls into the box for the late runners. Doesn't come off easy grab in the end for Olafson, but great idea for North Carolina already. Positive play, aggressive, especially in the midfield for the Tar Heels and creating some of these turnovers that are leading to their attacks. But it goes back to our, our point about Notre Dame and their pragmatic approach and how they stay tight between the lines. But the biggest challenge for them is once they do win it, can they be patient? Can they be composed? Connect their first pass? That's one of the reasons why we are seeing Mercado higher up the field so that she can play back to goal, link play, and then they can get runners off of her. 
Up the line go the Tar Heels. Emily Moxley officially starting in that right back spot, but you know she is an attacking player who will look to get into that attacking third whenever possible. Excellent service as Anson Dorrance well knows his 45th season in charge here in North Carolina. Still so much belief in this team, in this program, and why not? They sit unbeaten, one of six in the country, still with no losses in Division I. But their offense has been sputtering a little bit too. Their season low in shots in each of their last two matches. So when we talk about these teams needing to get their attacks wrapped up a little bit, I think you'd say that even more so for this North Carolina team. When you look at the firepower they have in this lineup, and when you consider they're playing at home. And I will be curious to see if this 4-3-3 formation helps them achieve that, create more opportunities, because you can already see in this game a lot of numbers in the central areas. De La Rose, who we mentioned, Moxie on the other side, the two outside backs in North Carolina. Can they provide width? Can they get higher up the field? And then move the ball, switch the point, and try to pull out Notre Dame a bit more in, in their previous formation. A lot of times, so many numbers in the central areas made it difficult for them to be able to exploit teams in a variety of ways. Yeah, I thought going back to the Florida State match, one of the games of the season, no doubt, North Carolina, Florida <laughs> State here at Dorrance Field on September 24th wound up being a 3-3 draw thanks to the Seminoles scoring at the death in that one from a corner kick. Cargill's looking right down the middle. A shot from distance from Ali Sentinor goes out wide. This will set up a corner for North Carolina. Well, it's an excellent play defensively from Gatino early on to win this header. Moves her feet really well, but then this is where the game's going to be won or lost. The second balls, you can see immediately North Carolina pounces on it. First time shot. That one sends it out to for a corner kick, but great start. And first to that loose ball for North Carolina. Tessa Delrose, the sophomore out of Pennsylvania, ready for the first corner for the Tar Heels. Ready? Away! Curls it in. Gatino again there, and the follow up shot is wide from North Carolina. Well, I think it gives us a, a good look at why goals as of recent have been hard to come by for North Carolina. A bit rushed opportunities. Could have potentially taken a, a touch on that initial shot that went out for the for the corner kick and then that one just miss hits it, sends it out for the goal kick. But they're getting clear opportunities and there should be a bit of a alarm signs for Notre Dame early on in this game making sure that they pick up loose balls, don't give anything away right outside their 18-yard box. And this is a slightly different look on that back line for Notre Dame. They stick with a three-back, which, as you said, could be a five at times, but Sophia Fisher stepping in for the freshman, Claire Logan, who'd been in there pretty consistently. Here's Mercado. Top of the spear for the Irish in their attack, but out of bounds before it can get in front of goal. Mercado, one of the players that Nate Norman said he challenged before the first ACC game about what it means to be a two-way player, to really be that example to, yes, we know we need offense from you, but to also show the effort you're going to put into leading their defense. Jenny Allen ready with the goal kick for North Carolina. Tar Heels did take a hit in their last match at Wake Forest. Evelyn Shores, the freshman who'd been starting in the midfield, especially for the last few matches for North Carolina, out with injury in that game. Where North Carolina has been so close to getting that pass through to Tori Della Peruta a couple of times already. Here comes her sister Talia. Tori looking to run. It goes back, a chance for a shot. Good step at the last moment by Roy. Those wingbacks are going to have to come back and do quite a bit defending, I think, for Notre Dame tonight. Well, it all starts with a great combination, getting players forward so quickly for North Carolina. And you see the amount of bodies back for Notre Dame, just last ditch defending, doing what they can. And then North Carolina at the end, unfortunately, just letting Notre Dame off the hook draws the foul and allows them to just slow things down and regain possession. But quickly, North Carolina gets players forward. And, and you mentioned Adela Peruta being the outlet up top. But then you have Meza already feeling the game. A number of touches centrally. We're going to see if she can play off of her. 
Nor Zosbeck immediately smothered by a couple of Tar Heels. Patterson came away with it, gets it to the other side. You have a whistle from a referee, Megan Mullen, in charge of this one tonight. Quick restart from Macy Bell. She and Savvy King, that impressive duo in the back, whether it's a four back or a three back. Kiki, right side. When I right side, watch nine as well. Good, good self, good self. Stay with Kiki, stay with her. Watch it go through. Dilla Rose. Watch the clock. Heading good. inside. Macy Bell, another one of those players whose minutes will be closely monitored tonight. As I said, did not play in the Wake Forest match, and she's so important, All-American defender for the Tar Heels. Patterson having her way with the ball on this side, gets it central. Senor looked like it did hit her hand there. But again, aggressive for North Carolina. Patterson showing her versatility. She can go down line, she can cut inside, picks out a really good pass to find the outlet of a Sintnor who cut in from that right-hand side. And, and right now, and we saw this for Notre Dame last week against Florida State, just pinned back so defensively in their three-back that at times it'll look like a five-back, but then you don't have much in the way of an attack going forward because all of your players are in a lower position. So how do they change that? How do they address that in-game? for Nate Norman's side will, will be an interesting question throughout this first 45 minutes. Yeah, because make no mistake, they may be a little more conservative, a little less aggressive than typically they've chosen to be facing North Carolina. They came here to win tonight. Yeah, and their DNA is to get players forward, to be as aggressive as we're seeing North Carolina, putting teams under pressure, winning the ball back higher up the field. But that starts with getting possession, being composed, movement off the ball once you do win it. And sometimes that means being patient and realizing you're not going to have the ball yeah, all the time. Exactly. Let North Carolina possess it and pick your moment. And that could be the maturity of this Notre Dame team as well, just understanding that at times in games like this when you're playing on the road, how do you give yourself the best chance to get a result? And that's being compact defensively and then working in numbers. But spot on, Jen, just being patient. Notre Dame really came out and, as Nate Norman told us, tried to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with number one Florida State out in Tallahassee last Thursday. We were there for that game, and they just, in, in the way that they played, they opened themselves up, got stretched out, and Florida State was really able to take advantage. So that's where you see all those numbers clustered together. That's the idea and what you've been talking about, staying compact, staying together, figuring out when you take those chances. But these are also the moments in, I will reference the Florida State game again because already it's similar, but they have to find ways to gain territory. When that ball is played back, can they move up? Can they step up for the line to be able to get pressure on the ball carrier? Because right now they are so deep in Mercado number three for Notre Dame. That's your center forward back below the center circle. North Carolina showing some good patience, trying to play through all of those white jerseys. Della Rose. One of the most fit on this incredibly fit North Carolina team by some of the numbers that they released from the preseason. 20 Tar Heels passing the preseason fitness test. That's the most in program history and test that Della Rose broke her own program record in the dreaded beep test, which essentially just counts for doing lots of sprints until you can sprint no more. <laughs> so she can run all night is what we're telling. Open. Yeah, and that is the right idea. That is the ball that has to be on for Notre Dame. So Van Zin has to be an outlet there to be able to break the first line of pressure and then get numbers around her. But you can see the, the angles have come too slow and then North Carolina doing what they do best, getting numbers around, regaining possession. Good. 
Does North down. Carolina Good. have the will, the discipline, the technique to break down a team that sits like this as Notre Dame is at the moment? Could be one of the challenges for the Tar Heels as this season continues on. Roy just run out of bounds. It'll be a North Carolina throw. to that front line, but it glances off the top of Patterson's head and out. Still not an easy possession here for Notre Dame as they'll have to take this throw deep in their own territory. Sophia Fisher, the junior, Scottsdale, Arizona, will take the throw. I've seen her more in the midfield for Notre Dame this season, but getting the start in the back line tonight. Good back heel to open things up for Colton. Della Pruta. Patterson. What a layoff. No chance to get it back. Good numbers again defensively, but the Irish concede the corner. Second of the match for North Carolina. And this is the pressure that North Carolina wants job, in the opening 15 minutes here at Dornson Field. Mark up, Christina. Just Marcus getting runners here. out of the midfield, creating the overloads in the wide areas, and just forcing Notre Dame to have to do some last stitch defending as that one sent out for the, the corner kick on this near side. And watch the movement. Most of the Tar Heels starting outside the area or further away from the goal. Sometimes you see that area so crowded. Go, go. Away! Oh, Over the head of Gatino. And go out for corner on the other side. And then also keep your eye on Macy Bell. She will certainly be one of the focal points in the air. She starts a little bit out of the play on the far side. Give herself a little bit of space to be able to run up, get some momentum to attack the, the corner kick. Go, go, go. Comes the service, curling in toward Bell. She was the target still. to winning this game, and that includes pouncing on the loose balls in the 18-yard box. Great delivery. Macy Bell is always going to be the focal point with her height, her ability in the air. Wins it initially, but then just look at the follow-up. They get there first, the aggression, just to get something on it. There's not a ton, but it's a, a great no-look finish by Patterson. Sixth goal of the year, and how good has she been? Just pouncing on that loose ball, sending it past Olofsson to put North Carolina up 1-0 in the first 20 minutes of this game. And great start for North Carolina, creating a lot of opportunities. That was a, one of the keys coming into this game, putting pressure on the opposition, creating opportunities, but finishing those chances as well. And Patterson swiveling around. I thought she had back heeled it the way she got that so cleanly into goal, but able to finish it off, as you said for the sixth goal of the season. Yeah, and initially it didn't look like she got great contact, but for a first time, as you mentioned, <laughs> whipping her body around, she did, and kept it low, kept it on frame, which is most important because it's gonna be difficult for Olsen to see that close inside the six-yard box. And I have to think that that makes this approach that Notre Dame is trying to employ tonight maybe a little more difficult because now you're not on even ground. You know you have to get higher up the field, or as you've pointed out, they, they've been pretty deep. Yeah, and you have to start taking some risks, and, and that means Roy on the right side, Clinky on the left, who's been excellent. We haven't called her name enough at all this game so far. Can they get their starting position a bit higher to get pressure on the ball in these areas? Because right now, Savvy King, Macy Bell, yes, they can float balls over, but you should initially win that as a back line. So can you get your restraining line higher up the field, put them under more pressure, the back line for North Carolina, and see if you can have a more aggressive approach than you currently are. Matriano goes back to Anaya Hudson. Quick 
look the other way for Klinky. As you said, one of the best at setting up her teammates in the ACC, Leah Klinky. Leads the conference in assists, nine on the season. Colton, Patterson, your goal scorer. Moxley back to Meza. North Carolina has won six in a row in the series between these two programs. This is the 34th meeting all time. The last game that was here in Chapel Hill was October of 2021. North Carolina did win that game in double overtime to won the final. Of course, we don't have double overtime in the regular season anymore, much to Anson Dorrance's <laughs> chagrin. Don't bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you understand it. I mean, his team, with the depth they have, with the way they like to run at people and bring waves of players off the bench, they're built to outlast teams. Yeah, certainly, and that's where they can outlast teams and really put games away. We're seeing Notre Dame in this little block. Patterson wanting some more, had a shot at the edge of the area. The last thing you'd want to do is continue to have to play defense. That's when they break teams down, North Carolina. This a momentum game, though, as Lori talked about. When we came on the air, these teams trying to pick up steam as they head toward the end of the regular season. Can't believe it's almost here. The ACC championship right around the corner. The NCAA tournament right on its heels. Well, my concern right now for Notre Dame is that they're already fairly exhausted from having to defend the first 25 minutes of this game. And it's slow for them to get numbers into the attack and in the district because North Carolina has the momentum. They want to run at teams. They want to put teams under pressure. And you're seeing that already. And now the game's starting to get a bit more stretched. And that's just going to play right into the favor in the hands of North Carolina. Colton goes down. No whistle on the play. Hudson comes away with it for the Irish. But there's nobody there. Yeah, and one of the things that was interesting when we spoke to Nate Norman prior to this game was in that corner final match last year at home, they tried to match North Carolina at their game, being aggressive, sending players forward. Well, ultimately, North Carolina is going to be better at playing their game, or at least on that day, right? They lost 2-0 at home prior to that had been on a roll and knew that he couldn't come into this game and match them up player for player. So at times, again, this could be a really big turning point for Notre Dame in terms of learning their lessons on when just to stay calm, as we mentioned, and then build into this game. And they have to get that player, Van Zanten, on the ball a bit more often in this game. Yeah, it's tough when you try to out North Carolina, North Carolina, as Nate Norman put it. And even Anson Dorrance after that quarterfinal match last year said that Notre Dame is a team that plays, one of the teams that plays the most similar to the way the Tar Heels do. But this is, this is Tar Heel soccer. You see the waves of players coming up into the attack. They're moving the ball around. And in that Florida State match with Anson Dorrance felt was one of his team's best of the season, you saw a variety in the way that North Carolina attacked. They came up the middle. They used the width. They attacked off of set pieces. No shots in the match so far for Notre Dame. Four for North Carolina, including the one that wound up in the back of the net. Here's another into the box. King with a big step. Now this is a chance for Notre Dame to break out. Savvy King had come forward. Mercado, the player you'd want to have it. And now Clinky. Savvy King, so impressive. Impressive, the freshman out of West Hills, California. Has some youth national team experience for the U.S. Is also a track star in high school. We've seen that burst of speed when needed, but her positioning usually is so good as well. Morgan Roy, just 
just under a foot and out of bounds. Well, here's a previous attempt for North Carolina, and this is what I like. We've seen the combination down the midfield. We've seen them score off a set piece, but then big balls over the top, and those are the areas that North Carolina is going to want to continue to put pressure. But once the ball is turned over, can Notre Dame win the ball centrally and then be patient to allow for more players to get into the attack? That's where Notre Dame is also going to have loads of success, winning the first and second ball once it is turned over, but they have to go in numbers once they do. Mercado with Della Pruta all over her back. That's the result of the whistle and the free kick coming now for Notre Dame. Now Eva Catino can really deliver a nice ball from midfield. You get a good flick here, you could potentially cause some problems. And this has been, if there is an area of concern defensively, we've seen this for North Carolina set pieces at times this season have given them some problems. Instead, the Irish shot to play it short, try to connect. Last match at Wake Forest, North Carolina led in that game until the 78th minute, and then the Demon Deacons were able to find the equalizer. Started with a free kick from midfield. First sub of the match, we'll see Lynch come off. Really didn't get to do too much at all. And Charlie Codd, the freshman, come on in her place. Yeah, well, I'll be interested to see if we see Lynch in a higher role when she comes back on in the second half, where she typically plays, just playing that deeper role, more of an attacking midfielder tonight, usually leading the line up top. So can she be more effective in that higher role in the second 45? College football starts Saturday at noon Eastern with Georgia Tech hosting Boston College. Then Pittsburgh coming off their big upset over number 21 Louisville is in Winston-Salem to take on Wake Forest. And we'll cap the day here on ACCN with Clemson and Miami at Hard Rock Stadium at 8. All three games also available on the ESPN app so you can watch anywhere. A lot of numbers and bodies central right now for both teams. This will be a North Carolina ball. Good match going on between Pitt and Florida State. The Seminoles, of course, one of the other unbeatens along with North Carolina. They trailed in that game against Pitt. But have come back to tie it. Meza. It's delightful with the ball at her feet, but winds up turning it over. And that's better from Van Zant. And just to wiggle her way out of pressure and then calmly lay the ball off. And now these are the moments where Notre Dame can, can start to move the ball, be a bit more comfortable in possession. Well done from Van Zanten again as that ball is turned over, but wins it back quickly. Oh, a missed touch in the back. The header will go over the head. No, and Allie Olofsson breathes a sigh of relief. Well, a bit uncharacteristic of Olofsson. Just can't get a hold of this one. That one's played back. Oh, really easy and delightful ball back and just gets underneath it, swings through it almost too too hard. Gets herself out of trouble is an easy save in the end, but a little bit of a, a nervy moment there for the Notre Dame goalkeeper, I would say. Freshman has just taken over the last few matches. This is her seventh start of the season. Are you proud of me that I haven't used any Frozen references yet? <laughs> just uh, more excited that you have it. <laughs> <laughs> well, just you wait. Thankful. <laughs> you probably see there at midfield the line that change ready to make its way onto the field for North Carolina. This is a staple of Anton Doran's coach teams. And he brings on the second unit now. Dali, I think she's been especially impressive off the bench. Isabel Cox. I'll get you the whole crew coming on. Typically, it is most of the attacking and midfield players that backline 
usually stays the same, but Anson did tell us earlier today, you might actually see a formation shift with this second group that comes on. You could see North Carolina try to go into a three back. Yeah, that's exactly what we're gonna see, especially with Macy Bell working her way off the field right now. And going to a four back, really providing her a little bit of coverage and knowing that she's carrying a knock, but then also is limited in terms of minutes being able to play, being played. And this is really the preferred system at a lot of the time for Anthony Dorrance and his coaching staff to be in the, the three, three, one, four, two, essentially, where they can get more players forward, put the opposition under more pressure. We'll see how this changed things, not only for, for North Carolina getting some fresher legs on, but Notre Dame in terms of the space that they can exploit if they can get a hold of the ball and keep the ball a little bit longer in possession. It does look like it is at three back. Emerson Elgin has come on. She's on the ball now. Savvy King and Kaylee Hare has come on in the middle. Here is Hare on the ball. And this is one of the things under Anson Dorrance, obviously the entire history of, of North Carolina, but it's been so exciting is their willingness to try different formations. And I think you're seeing that why they have been so successful. Yes, it's been difficult for them to score goals as of late or create a lot of chances comparatively to the beginning of the season, but they are forward thinking, they want to get on the front foot, so they're always looking for different ways to create and find the best system for their teams, and they have the fluidity and the personnel to be able to switch in game, which makes it so difficult for opposing teams, especially playing here at home. is Maddie Dahlin, Bella Sember, Melina Rabimbas, Mia Oliaro, some of the other players who've come on in that last change. Cox. Ball coming across, Dahlin with the header. Well, great positioning. Just stays out wide, creates her own space on that far side. It's a, a beautiful ball in. Look at all the space, the late run, the late pressure from Notre Dame, and then not the cleanest of header. There's a lot of bodies. Credit to Notre Dame defensively getting numbers around the target in the 18-yard box, but great idea, and one of the reasons why North Carolina has a variety of ways. Now can they be even more clinical, getting those headers on frame, more players in the box. Ravimbos with the corner for North Carolina. Van Zanten. Has it for Notre Dame. Looking for Osbeck up the field. And just going back to the formations of North Carolina, it's something that we've heard Brian Pinsky talk about at Florida State as well. Having some different formations to be able to change if things aren't going your way, if you need to get better control of the game. And we spoke about it last game for Notre Dame as we're going to see an attack on that far side. And here comes another cross right into the central area in front of the goal. But I think with how tight the margins are, particularly in this conference, it is advantageous if you have at least a second formation you can go to because right now Notre Dame can't even get out of their own half defensively. And it doesn't look like they have any idea in terms of any other ideas in terms of how to switch their formation to get more players higher up the field. And it did, it was starting to feel, I thought, that Notre Dame was growing in confidence yep. a little bit. They were starting to figure out what they needed to do. And now it's a whole different look. Yeah, let me let me rephrase that. It's not that Nate Norman and then don't have any ideas. They certainly do and can shift things tactically. But in terms of formation, we've seen them be in this 3-5-2, but they're so pinned in defensively that it does make them difficult to be able to build with numbers. And that's what we're so used to seeing from this Notre Dame team and how difficult they can be. Oliaro puts it across. Boy, the crosses are flying in for North Carolina right now. Cut back, a shot, and North Carolina adds to the lead. Actually, hold on, let me take that back. Side net was this. Well, it's Darlene with the initial pressure and then gets the, the rebound again. Yeah, that doesn't Ooh. miss by much. From our angle, it didn't <laughs> look like she just curled it into that far post. And 
one an opportunity. She had started it with her defensive pressure, tried to finish it off. But listen, this is what makes them so difficult. You, you start the game strong, you're on the front foot, positive play, and then you bring in a whole you a whole new team. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> pretty much. Six subs came on in the, that change for North Carolina. Hayes was, I think, the only one I neglected to mention. Getting a little more time now in one of those holding midfield spots with the injury to Evelyn Shores. Roy having to defend. North Carolina gets it up and look, that's a massive save. Well, that is a huge save from Olsen, and that's exactly what you need in these points of time in the season to keep your team in the game. Another great build up as Cox on this near side that just gets past Roy and the right ball, cutback ball as the late run was coming in. As Darlene again it takes it well, but Olsen, a big play to keep that one out. Fifth corner of this first half for North Carolina. Bounces out of bounds and the Irish can catch their breath for a moment. Well, be sure to stick around at halftime because this is something relatively new to the soccer world. You might be familiar with it for basketball, but the NCAA Women's Division I Soccer Committee is going to reveal their top 16 teams. So what that means is if the NCAA tournament were to start tomorrow, these would be your top 16 teams in the country. Those would have the opportunity to host as the tournament gets going. So this is important. It really lets teams see where they stand at the moment, not necessarily the order you might expect based on some of the rankings. The attack just won't stop for North Carolina. Deline causing all kinds of problems. Yeah, she's certainly feeling it already. Coming in defensively, working hard, creating some of those turnovers, getting on the end. Two quality opportunities from the substitute. Eight shots for North Carolina, none in the match for Notre Dame. Just a little less than 10 minutes left to go. That's a pressure that North Carolina needs to continue to employ. Get shots on target, force Olsen to have to make even more saves in these last few minutes of this first half. But continue the pressure, continue to create chances. See if you can create a little separation as well in the scoreline headed into halftime. And then for Notre Dame, can you find some positives in this first 45 by getting a hold of the ball, don't get stretched defensively and then create some territorial advantage right here as you push your back line up. Irish made a few changes too as Mercado goes down. No whistle on the play though. You might see number 16, Meg Merwicki, the freshman who has started a number of matches for the Irish. She's come in up top. Four goals, two assists on the season for Merwicki. Aaron Hanstein, Audrey Weiss, to grad students. So some experience coming on the field to probably try and settle things down as it has been a Tar Heel onslaught of shots over the last few minutes. And it actually in terms of, well, I was thinking that they actually had gone to a little bit of a formation change, but it does look like they are still in the three back that majority of the time does look like a five back for Notre Dame. Clicky on the ground for Morowicki just bumped right off the ball. This is going to be a defining stretch of the season for Notre Dame. We're going to be right there with you along for the ride. We're with the Irish last week down in Tallahassee. Obviously, we have them here tonight, and then we will finish up. Yeah, a couple games or so for, for Notre Dame as well, Florida State. And then you have North Carolina, obviously, here in this game. Clemson at home next Thursday, so NC State away from home on Sunday. For North Carolina, yeah. Oh, no, Notre Dame, you're right. Why am I correcting you? Yeah, I should trust you, Lord. That's my fault. I know we went over the schedule together beforehand. Yeah, and you could see all those teams in the standings. A lot of the ones you mentioned, obviously, toward the top of the ACC standings. So it is a tough road. Yeah. 
Seminoles, by the way, update in that match. Told you they initially trailed Pitt in the first half, but three unanswered second half goals by the Seminoles have the number one team looking good to hang on there. North Carolina also looking really confident in this first half. Here's a turnover. Just the one goal though, 18th minute. Avery Patterson doing the damage, started off a corner kick for the Tar Heels. And at times they do look a bit more confident. Mercado has dropped into a more preferred role as an attacking midfield fielder. And as she gets on the ball a bit more, I think that they can have more positive play, but the first touch has to be a bit better. It's putting them under pressure, allowing North Carolina. But I think from a, a positive standpoint right now, with just a little less than five minutes to go, you're only down 1-0 when you haven't had much of the possession. Nothing in the way of the attack for Notre Dame in this first half. And North Carolina has been positive. They've created some opportunities in different ways, but kind of goes back to the same point that we've been making. Two big save, or a big save from Olofsson, just missed from Darlene. The one opportunity went wide. So outside of that, not a ton of clear opportunities for North Carolina for the amount of pressure and possession they've had. See Damon Nahas and the goal scorer, Avery Patterson, but <laughs> Damon certainly gets a lot of credit from Anson Dorrance for what this North Carolina team does out on the field. Associate head coach for the Tar Heels. Rabimbus. Irish get a chance to take it over. Have some numbers now, Mercado. Trying to get some width. Ball left a little short. Clinky, can she make something of it? Mercado back to Clinky with the turn. Chance edge of the area. Weiss up into the box for Notre Dame. In front of the goal, the Irish. Yes, they've got the tie. One shot. One goal. What we've been saying all half long, that it's just about getting a hold of the ball, being composed, being patient, getting numbers into the box, and then they do everything right. They've got numbers in the box. It's a little cutback ball where they have the runners, and then they pounce on it. And it is an excellent finish from Cod. Just keeps it on frame as she swings through it. Ties the game 1-1 for Notre Dame. Really against the run of play for how much possession opportunities North Carolina has. But a huge goal in the dying minutes of this first half for Notre Dame to tie this game away from home. And Charlie Codd has been starting to come on. Didn't score in the last match against Florida State, but had a goal in each of the last two games prior to that matchup against the Seminoles. And we found out a cool fact about Charlie Codd talking to Nate Norman last week. And her mom, you may recognize the name, Charmaine Hooper, Canadian Soccer Hall of Famer. Of course, played at NC State. She's a Hall of Famer there. Her dad also played soccer at NC State, her dad, Chuck. So they're watching. That's a big moment for Charlie and the Irish. And they really needed that positive moment. First shot, first goal of the first half. And now, if it stays like this, can go into the halftime with a bit more confidence and adjustments that need to be made. Because I would imagine Macy Bell's going to see her way back onto the field. You're going to see North Carolina go back to the four back where they had a bit more security on that back line. And more players going forward, especially in the midfield. They had a lot more control when they are in that 4 through 3 formation throughout the first part of this first half. Oliaro. And Dolly now back on it. Cox does take a deflection. It's a bit of an awkward punch as Olofsson was blocked from getting to the ball. North Carolina still looking to create out of this opportunity. They'll get a corner. Yeah, and you can see the uptick and aggression defensively for Notre Dame. And let's not forget that save from Olofsson because sometimes that's what you need just to keep a little bit of life and belief into the game. Well, that was a huge save. And then they go down on the other end. First opportunity, get the tying goal. And now it's about defending in these moments because this is where North Carolina scored their first goal. 
Remember, not always from the first ball either, but the ball that drops down after the initial service. Rabimbus serves it up. That was looking to be an initial shot. Is there a follow-up, though, for North Carolina? Hayne just trying to clear. Eventually, they do. And I'm curious, Lori, as North Carolina's trying to figure out their best formation, they've looked pretty good since these subs have come on. Yes, they conceded the goal, so, though, so maybe to your point, that extra defensive security that the fullback provides is their preferred formation going forward. But there's a lot to like about the way this group is playing, too. Oh, no doubt. And there's good energy. They're moving it side to side, especially on the far side. They're getting isolated, serving dangerous balls in. It's whipped in that pace. They've got the overloads. But I think what we're seeing now is a bit more confidence in Notre Dame since scoring that tying goal and the pressure to get defensive work behind the ball on the ball carrier is, is what's changed is we're going to see an aggressive play on this near side that could be potentially a, a dangerous free kick for North Carolina. Yeah, and it's a yellow card on Audrey Weiss. So this is going to stop the clock and set up the free kick for the Tar Heels. Well, Darlene has been the best player from the substitutes coming on, making all kinds of runs, getting on the ball, driving, drawing attention to herself, and then drawing this foul. That sets him up in this last few seconds of this first half. Tar Heels may feel ill done by conceding the goal completely against the run of play in this first half. And they get something back on the set piece. Headed back in front, but off the top of the crossbar and out. You can feel like you've dominated a match, but you need to make it show up on the scoreboard. That's been part of the story for the Tar Heels this season. And now after that late goal from the Irish, they'll have to settle for the 1-1 draw at the half. Yeah, it's a great start for North Carolina to this game. Both in dance and in sport. And Meza, certainly a good candidate for that. They played the video at halftime. It was astonishing. Honestly, if you have a chance, go check it out because it really is wonderful to see that dance soccer history that the Dorrance family has in abundance. Second half underway from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. We're in the Carolina blue. Notre Dame in white, making their one shot count in the first half. And now a free kick for the Tar Heels to start things off. Moxley serves it into the box, drops down in the area. So much energy really throughout that first half for North Carolina. It feels a little bit like it has waned somewhat as we start the second half. Let's see if that changes. There's a shot. Oh, that's one way to get things going. It's a little high. But getting the start in the second half, Emerson Elgin with the shot. Well, that is a left back because they have started in the four back North Carolina to start this second half. and. Elgin just gets herself into a higher position, sees, lo sees loads of space in front of her. No one steps out. That one's rising, but another positive start for North Carolina to this second half. And we'll just want to make sure that they keep that going and now keep forcing Olofsson to have to, to make saves, keep their opportunities on frame. So North Carolina started this match in a four back, shifted to a three back protect a couple of their players on the back line. That's one of the reasons for starting with four. Macy Bell has the knee brace on the left knee. She's been battling an injury this year. And then Emerson Elgin, who does start the second half. Don't anticipate she'll go to full 45, so we'll see. Here's Mercado with a pocket of space. Mercado cuts it to her left. As Ospek looking across the other way, headed down. 
And McConnell makes a good run for it. Still alive. The flag has come up. So this goal will not count. Morgan Roy thinking she had the Irish off to a very advantageous start. And then one of the areas coming into this game for Notre Dame that they wanted to exploit against North Carolina was this wide areas. That's where they look most dangerous. It starts on this near side, just a floated ball in. And I don't think it was an offside. I think it was that challenger yeah. right there that they get called on because you could see the flag go up on that far side as soon as that challenge is made. And I think that's the argument that Nate Norman is saying. It, they have the right to go for that ball. It was loose. I would agree with him. Yeah, there was not possession there. And from I think at the Emmy end, Allen. though, you're just trying to protect, protect Emmy Allen. Still, though, I, I think you're right. I think that the Notre Dame player had every right to go for that ball because Allen did not have it in her possession. And that's a promising start, though, because I don't think we saw anything that dangerous in the attack for Notre Dame until they scored the goal, which came the 42nd minute. Yeah, and let's just take a look at it again because there isn't any offside. And then you see Mercado getting into a good position. There isn't good possession at all from Amy Allen. And in fact, it almost looks like a little bit of the collision from the defender for North Carolina is the one that also pops that ball loose once Allen does try to make the initial contact and smother it. But you're right, positive start from Notre Dame and much better in terms of finding the wide areas because they were getting overrun in the central areas, couldn't get control of the ball, but now we're seeing Mercado dropping a bit deeper. She's the one that started that play and then trying to finish it off as well. And that has to be one of the tweaks that you would imagine Nate Norman was making at halftime, continuing to find the wide areas see if they can punish North Carolina and those when they attack. That was one of the lessons learned from that quarterfinal matchup in South Bend a year ago. Here's Klinky. She'll get it back. ACC assist leader, Leah Klinky. There's Roy. That's where she scored from. The goal didn't count. It was called off due to a foul on the play. Perhaps unfairly, but that was the call made on the field. But Notre Dame may be finding a better balance to start the second half. Do you want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and be North Carolina aggressive against North Carolina in Chapel Hill? Maybe not, at least not for 90. But you also can't sit back so much that you just let them play and have their way all over the field, which the Tar Heels pretty much did in that first But what was the one comment that we said coming into this game for Notre Dame, and that was the belief that they could beat some of these top-tier teams away from home. So at some point in time, it's risk versus reward. You have to go for a win. You have to leave yourself a bit exposed to take those risks to get more players in the attack. We didn't see that at all, except for the goal. It, late in the, the first 45 outside of that, they were pinned back defensively, couldn't get out of their own half. That was the only shot in the first 45 minutes. And, and really, North Carolina dominated throughout. They'll be happy with, unhappy with conceding that goal. But now it's about picking their moments, Notre Dame, of when they can be in this defensive posture as we're seeing now, getting numbers behind the ball, but then also attacking with numbers and being confident when they do. Moxley to Meza. North Carolina did a really good job to creating corners, six of them in the first half, none for Notre Dame. And the Tar Heel goal did come off a corner kick in the 18th minute. Bouncing ball toward Olofsson. She has it at the near post. Saturday morning, the ACC Huddle Crew will kick off the day at 11 a.m. Eastern with a 60-minute pregame show leading into Georgia Tech hosting Boston College at noon. They'll also have halftime shows and pre- and post-game shows throughout the day. After Clemson and Miami, stay right here on ACCN for a complete wrap-up and interviews with players and coaches. Patterson. Goal scorer for North Carolina in the 18th minute, her sixth of the season. Anaya Hudson, one of those quiet leaders, but been so consistent on the back line. Fourth year as a starter on that Notre Dame defense.
Macy Bell, Savvy King, is there a better center back duo in the country? I'm not sure you could find one. King. Turned over. The only player back at the moment for North Carolina was Macy Bell. As King had come up, here comes Clinky. Different kind of a look that time. Well, this is a switch, Jen, that they made. Sorry to, to cut you off. But Mercado is deeper, and she's getting on the ball, and she's being direct, and she's conducting play in the midfield, as we just see a turnover there from Meza trying to play forward. But then also Lynch, higher up the field. She has more pace. She can stretch and get pressure more immediately than we saw in that first half, and it's allowing Notre Dame then to be able to stretch. And we, we talked about gaining territory at moments in the first half, and we didn't see Notre Dame do that. Well, now they can, especially with Lynch leading the line. Ali Sintnor brings it in. Patterson can just pop up anywhere on the field for North Carolina and <laughs> be dangerous. That's exactly it. She does just pop up. You're like, wait, how did you get there? You were out wide left a second ago. I just look for that brace on the wrist, and I know it's her. No saves in the match for Emmy Allen. As we mentioned, just the one shot for Notre Dame, and it went in. Good touch. A chance-saving touch from Ellie Ospek out wide to Roy. Morgan Roy thought she had the go-ahead goal in this second half. Notre Dame with Kiki Van Zanten. She can't get a shot off. Colton leading the charge the other way for North Carolina. Tori Della Peruta. Still good numbers there defensively for Notre Dame. And that was the point that I was going to make. Even if the game starts to get a bit stretched, as we typically see in these second halves, they still have good coverage in Notre Dame. So it was a 3v2 in the favor of Notre Dame defensively as North Carolina try to go quickly in that transition moment. Came into this match talking about the lofty aspirations for both of these programs. I mean, North Carolina unbeaten, number three in the country right now. How good can the Tar Heels be? Patterson looking for another shot. This one right at Olofsson. Well, it's incisive, it's clinical. Starts with Patterson, then looking to find Colton. And it's those cutback balls that have looked dangerous because they have trailing runners. It's a first touch for Colton that sets her up to bypass the pressure that had come and, and strikes it well, but right to Olofsson. A positive play, and I imagine Anson Dorrance is happy with that build up, getting numbers and players in and around the 18 yard box. We didn't even really see this from North Carolina in the first half, feeling like they needed to go back and use their goalkeeper, Emmy Allen. Everything was forward in the first 45. Well, and outside of the position changes I talked about with Mikado, she's trying to apply a little bit of pressure, but it's excellent because you can see the frustration from Della Peruta, and just that little bit of intensity is the difference right now in this second half. Mikado just you see a number of players in that central area not happy. Well, I appreciate the referee, Megan Mullen, getting right into the thick of it. Did blow the whistle on the initial play. Talia Del Pruta was fouled. That is a player who plays on the edge. And then Sam Meza came in after the fact and picked up the yellow card. Well, it's Mercado that gets the yellow card initially, then Meza. And there's the pressure, and that's the difference right now. It's a clear yellow, as we can see from that angle, from Mikado, as she just gets her arms around the shoulders of Della Peruta, and they're not happy, and that's the frustration. But that's the difference, that's the elevation of the game for Notre Dame that we didn't see coming into the first of 45. And in fact, I think that is a yellow card that Mikado will take any day, because it's allowing them to build confidence, but also to force North Carolina a little bit on the, their, their heels. And going back to my previous point, though, Jen, we are seeing Notre Dame employ two 
two forwards at times that's allowing them to be higher up the, the field as well. A little too much contact there. As Ava Catino is trying to clear it away. Tori Della Peruta. Della Peruta sisters from the Atlanta area, both in the starting 11 for North Carolina tonight. can tell Notre Dame willing to take some of the steam out of this game, some of the wind out of North Carolina sails, if you will. They're taking their time in moments like this. They want to play with that frenetic tempo and pace that North Carolina can sometimes create. North Carolina with six draws on the season. That's already the most in program history in the season. Now remember we are in the second year of college soccer not having overtime in the regular season. So that does change things. Some of these draws perhaps would have ended in a result had we had overtime to play. Won't see that until the postseason. Delta Bruta trying to get to it before it goes out of bounds. Can't quite do it. It'll be a goal kick for Notre Dame. Darlene coming in for North Carolina. She was one of the more impressive players off the bench, not just in this match, really all season, what she's been doing for the Tar Heels. Member of the USA U23 team earlier this year at the CONCACAF Championship, had four goals tied for the team lead. Player that's certainly getting some attention from the national team, not the youth level. This match really important, not just for momentum, although that is certainly something both of these teams would like to take out of it, but talked about this stretch that Notre Dame is on, where they were at Florida State, at North Carolina tonight. They've got NC State on the road on Sunday. Then they host Clemson, another top 10 team. So their, their season could be made or broken in this stretch they're in right now. And then for North Carolina, Road does get a little easier in terms of at least rankings. They've got Syracuse and Boston College to the teams toward the bottom of the ACC to round out their regular season. So you want to win or a result that's going to impress that seating committee? Well, this is one that can do it for you. Gatino, reigning ACC defensive player of the year and all American in the back line for the Irish. Clinky. Big switch to the other side. Yeah, that's a great ball just to relieve pressure. We talk about breaking lines, getting past the first line of pressure. Well, that type of ball does it. A little combination on this near side, but defensively, Patterson, why she's been so immense for North Carolina throughout this season, playing on both sides of the ball. We've seen her cause trouble in the attack, but works tirelessly on the defensive side as well. You see her make that play in now North Carolina, but this game is starting to open up. And we're starting to see Notre Dame as well, playing confidently, getting on the ball, and starting to string a few more passes together, which has been important and needed for this team that played a lot of minutes chasing the ball in the first 45. Lynch. Ospek. King gets there first. Do have a stoppage, Notre Dame player down is Mercado. An important piece of this Notre Dame team and does seem to be finding more of the ball in the second half, Lori, than she did in the first. And you understand the idea from Nate Norman and his coaching and his coaching staff just from employing her a bit higher up to start. It didn't look like much in it. She put a lot of miles in, first half having to thin, but 
to start this game, we did talk about her playing as a center forward to be able to play more back to goal, link play, get on it, and allow for more runners to get beyond. Well, it really didn't have much in the way of the ball at all to be able to find her. So getting her back into her more preferred position, which is a little bit deeper in midfield, now she can start to conduct play, switch the point. It's one of the reasons why we've seen the shift in a much more even game to start the second half. Well, both players taking a moment to come over, get a little hydration as Mercado was tended to. It's a beautiful night here in Chapel Hill. Feels like fall is starting to creep in. North Carolina, Notre Dame looking to move up in the ACC. Remember, your top six qualify for the Ally ACC Championship. Florida State did hang on to pick up their seventh conference win of the season. They remain unbeaten there atop the table. Clemson, Pittsburgh, both putting together great seasons. The Panthers losing on the road 3-2 in Tallahassee tonight. So Mercado at the moment on the bench. Charlie Codd has come into the match, but she replaces Ellie Ospek. It's the Irish maybe down a player at the moment. It looks like Hanstein did come on. And North Carolina wasting no time getting into the attack. the control that they had earlier in this match. I think through Meza, through Colton in the midfield, can they get on the ball a little bit more? Because when they do, it narrows the field at times, but then it allows them to play Patterson, Sintnor. That's when they had a lot of their success as well, because Patterson, Sintnor can decide if they're going to come in and combine, if they're going to stay wide and get themselves isolated. But if those two players of Colton and Meza are not on the ball, then it just becomes a back and forth, and you start to allow a Notre Dame team to be able to regain possession and take over. Christina Lynch on her own at the moment. Going forward for Notre Dame, holds it up now, allows for some help to come in the form of Clinky. Cod in the middle, goal scorer for the Irish. Here's Van Zanten. Has it taken off her foot by Sam Meza. Roy to Van Zanten. There is Hanstein, the player who came into the match when Mercado went off. Van Zanten. Cod. And they had Roy on that far side to be able to play her immediately. And I think that they can continue to find those wide areas a bit quicker. They can punish North Carolina because otherwise, look at the amount of numbers North Carolina gets behind the ball, the ball themselves. So disciplined defensively, and it's going to be difficult for Notre Dame if they don't go quickly to break down with the tired legs that are starting to settle in. Colton leading the charge for North Carolina has sent North breaking out wide. Back to the top of the box. Moxley, too high. Well, on the same side for North Carolina, you see Darlene pointing to her, to her feet. Can we get it wide? Because that is not the attempt North Carolina will want. You're not even putting Olsen in a position to have to make a save. You see the wide area on that far screen, on the far side of your screen. Just play the simple ball. Get a shot that forces Olsen to have to come up with another big save. But keep your chances on frame. So you give your you and your team an opportunity at least for a rebound. Yeah, to me, Lori, the North Carolina team has been a bit of an enigma this season, and we talked about that with Anson Dorrance this morning. You look across this team, and you look at the talent that they possess in every line, all those attacking threats. You've got Meza in the middle to pull the strings. You've got great defenders in the back. Macy Bell, Savvy King anchoring that back line. 
where and how is it breaking down to where they are not creating and finishing the number of chances that you feel they should with this team? I'm not sure they know the answer to that. Yeah, I mean, and Anthony Dorn said that point blankly to us that that's what they're still trying to figure out, right? They are defending well, they're keeping possession at times. He did reference that Florida State game, out possessing Florida State, which doesn't typically happen for North Carolina in that particular matchup. But then when it comes to the opportunities, aren't creating them and aren't finishing the ones that they do get. And I think sometimes it's just about rushing. You are seeing teams that play low blocks against them. So can they be even more patient? And that will be the evolution of North Carolina going into the postseason, though, is just finding that next pass, right? Not rushing, knowing that there's a better option. And then things will open up. So if they don't look for that final pass, then maybe they'll get that little glimpse to take it themselves. Seventh corner of this match for North Carolina. Notre Dame has yet to take one. I would say the majority of them have been won by Notre Dame and many of them by Gatino. She gets there first, but now there's a push. And so it'll be a set piece, essentially a short corner for North Carolina on the other side. Well, Macy Bell is still in the game. She's the one that won the initial header on the first goal of this game for North Carolina. So it's about being touch tight for Notre Dame defensively and then North Carolina do what they can to get a little bit of separation to get something on the end of this ball that's gonna be sent in from Sentinel. Kept on the ground, Moxley now looking for the back post and Bell. that Notre Dame has done well defensively, but I'm not sure from that angle, why not just put it in, whip that ball in, give Bell an opportunity to get something on it, because this, this makes it more difficult for North Carolina to try to get something, and Hudson does well defensively to get there first, send it out for another corner kick for North Carolina. Recording disaster for Notre Dame, continuing to allow these set pieces, driven across, Gatino wins it again. Wills her way onto the ball. Delrose has come into the match. Tessa Delrose to replace Elgin on the back line for North Carolina. This looks more like the 12th ranked Notre Dame team, though, that I think we expected to see from the beginning in this one tonight. Yeah, I think they'll be certainly disappointed with the way that they started that game. And a lot of the credit to North Carolina because they came out, as we know they would at home, firing in all cylinders, pushing the pace, getting numbers going forward. But Notre Dame completely shell-shocked, it felt like, in the first 30, 35 minutes of that game. Really couldn't get anything going. And sometimes it's about controlling those moments that you can control, and that was defensively. And we're seeing that in this second half. And just look at the body language in terms of aggression to get pressure on the ball carrier. Colton out wide for Moxley. No service allowed as Clinky defends but concedes. Nope, it'll be a goal kick. Looks like that initially might be a corner, but goal kick the call. A couple of subs coming on for Notre Dame. Mercado, good to see her back out there. And Caroline Gray, 5'9", senior, number 27 for the Irish, also makes her first appearance in the midfield, replacing Matriano. All the teams in the ACC right now trying to keep pace with Florida State. Seminoles 
sitting atop the ACC standings, still unbeaten overall on the season, as are the Tar Heels, but a few more draws in the ledger for North Carolina. Have them who are more points down the standings. Colleen blocked. Meza picks it up. Patterson. Look at the corner. Yeah, and when we think about Notre Dame and, and even North Carolina in this situation about finding out about themselves late in the season, a little tweaks that they can make to be able to put themselves in even a better position. This is the argument. That is the right call. It does go off of Patterson in the end. Great defending from Fisher, who we mentioned had come into that back line, typically a midfielder for Notre Dame, but brought her in to help secure things defensively and potentially try to build out of the back and keep possession a bit more throughout this game. But I think one of the things for Notre Dame coming into this game is that pragmatic approach. Can they find moments when they can still be aggressive, but you can be comfortable without having the majority of possession as well? You sense a push here from North Carolina. Got a couple of corner kicks keeping the ball down in this attacking end of the field. Well, that's why I made that point about Notre Dame, because they might have to be comfortable this last 20 minutes or so not having the majority of the ball, but can they be even smarter and apply better pressure than we saw in that first half that, that really put them out of reach in, in terms of trying to keep themselves in this game outside of that one opportunity. Notre Dame coming into this match with 16 points. Florida State sitting at 22 at the moment. North Carolina has 15 points in the ACC. Three points for the win, one point for the draw. And just two regular season matches remaining. That is hard to believe. <laughs> and then the Ally ACC Championship will be here road in Cary, North Carolina. Meza. Bell up and into an advanced position. Can be effective there, even though at times Anson Doran says she's like a giraffe completing a pirouette. There's just something about the way she moves. Might look a little <laughs> different, but she gets it done. Darlene, so tough to contain one-on-one. -on -one. And now Mercado back on the field for the Irish. Has Eli Ospek, but a little too close. <laughs> well, I'm not sure that Ospek wanted that ball. You can see it just a little. <laughs> oh, the nodding of the head like, oh, geez, here we go again. <laughs> I thought that was because it was played a little too close to <laughs> Savvy King, but now all the same. Now she might get another opportunity. <laughs> Clinky. Left it short. Onstein keeps it alive. Now Greg. It's somewhat unbelievable that Notre Dame still only has the one shot in this match. It's felt more even in the second half. Shots were 10-1 advantage North Carolina in the first half, so you can see five in the second half that the Tar Heels have added on. But it has still felt much more even. And should Notre Dame not manage to get any more off, one shot would tie for the fewest in the game in program history. <laughs> And the accuracy is quite yeah. extraordinary. A one for one. Yep. 100%. There's been a more maturity in this second half for Notre Dame. North Carolina still trying to figure it out. This will earn another corner kick for the Heels. Well, even though it's been even or more even in this second half, there's some weapons that North Carolina can break out with and 
Sintner does so well is to find a little bit of space, and that one had some pace on it. Third corner kick of the second half for North Carolina, ninth of the match. Emily Moxley just deadly on set pieces, had eight assists last season. A couple of those came off of corner kicks. She has three assists this year for the Tar Heels. Pops it up. Well, Katina's been excellent, and, and outside of that first goal for North Carolina on the set pieces, haven't nearly looked as threatening. And one thing to be wary of if you are North Carolina is if you're familiar with the dropping points from a leading position statistic, it's not one you really want. And North Carolina, while they have yet to lose this season, look what's happened in the last four matches that have ended in draws for the Tar Heels. They've led and they've conceded a game-tying goal in the final 15 minutes of those. And that includes their last two. Kiki Van Zanten, Lainey Matriano back on for Notre Dame. I don't know that the Irish would feel especially good about the way this one has played out if it stands 1-1. But it would be impressive if they can come away with the point. I think North Carolina, you would feel certainly disappointed. Well, I think the only counter argument is that Notre Dame wouldn't be happy outside the goal in the first half because they knew it was, as we're going to see, a, a tough challenge on that far side in favor of North Carolina. But they knew coming into this game that this wasn't going to be a game that they really wanted to open up themselves. It's Kiki Van Zanten is going to be the one that's going to get a talking to. But Notre Dame didn't want to open up themselves defensively and get played through. That's what happened against Florida State. We saw the result 4-1. to one. Here's the challenge. Kiki Van Zanten, no real attempt to, to play the, the ball at all, just a forearm into the back. But this second half, much more positive in the way that they're playing on both sides of the ball. And then North Carolina, yeah, I mean, listen, dominated that first half, will be extremely upset with themselves. Darrows! Three, four players go down, and we've got a foul whistled in the box. The Tar Heels are going to get a penalty on this play. Yeah, I thought that might happen. Our referee, Megan Mullen, will go take a look at it as part of the experimental replay reviews that the ACC has for conference games this year. If a penalty kick is called on the field, the referee is allowed to go back and take a look at it. Well, one of the things that we said, Jen, in the first half for North Carolina in particular, was serve balls into that wide area force Notre Dame to have to defend. It's a good ball in because you have runners. That doesn't look like a, a penalty kick to me because it looks like an aggressive runner that runs into the back of Hudson. And it's Moxley, as soon as she's trying to get into good position, sorry, it's Sintnor, I don't think sees Hudson at the last second and the both of them collide. I think it's the momentum of Sintnor that takes her down. There's not enough in it because actually Hudson is trying to mark Moxley. And she stops. You yep. can see Hudson just stop her I, forward I, momentum. I, I think this one should be called back. Shouldn't be the penalty kick. There's not enough in it. So there are your experimental video review situations that the referee can look at. It, it all comes down to the lead official, Megan Mullen in this case, if she wants to look at it. But remember, you do have to have indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the field, and the call on the field was penalty. I would agree with you that in the run of play in real time, I don't think that's a penalty. However, I, that's the only gray area where I think maybe it could stand, but let's see what she decides, is that it was called a penalty. Was there enough there indisputable for her to say it's not a penalty, it's overturned? And I wonder if this conversation between the two head coaches, she's explaining that because otherwise I would say she goes right to the penalty spot, picks it out and says that penalty kick stands. Because to me, there is clear evidence that that is not a penalty kick. You can overturn that original call. 
guessing by that gesture. Yep, there you go. No penalty. And I, I agree with you, Lori. I do think that this play should not result in a penalty kick. Let's put it that way. But listen, I go back to the initial point. This is exactly what North Carolina wants to do. Whip balls in. You have committed runners. You want to put Notre Dame in these positions. And we haven't seen that enough from North Carolina in this second half. They could be dangerous in a variety of ways. And that goes back to our initial point coming into this game. How can they be even more clinical? Because they have all the tools, right? You have players that can take on 1v1. You can go in combination. And you can also serve dangerous balls in from the wide areas. It's just about picking those moments when to do that and gain control, gain or regain authority to this game by finding those different, different ways to, to attack. I think North Carolina would probably appreciate a few more attempts from the penalty spot, though. That is one area they have left some points on the table. Tar Heels one for four from the mark on the season, sitting we're offside. So that will bring it back. Well, one way you do that is serve balls in because it's difficult to defend. You have to stay touch tight. Reason why that was called a penalty kick to begin with is because, one, it's difficult for the, the referee to make that initial decision as well, as we're going to see sitting we're just offside on that through ball. It is clear and the right call. But you want players like that tempting in behind as well, especially as Notre Dame's going to start to push a bit, maybe to try to get a go-ahead goal, pick their moments as well. But serving balls in, so difficult to defend if you're one of those defenders on the back line. So keep doing it. Yeah, we haven't seen that type of an attack where North Carolina really tests and tries to get behind Notre Dame. It wasn't an option in the first half, as deep as the Irish were. Now, though, that they're pushing forward a little more, maybe that option is there. Sophia Fisher got the start, was called a revelation at the six at the holding midfield spot earlier this season by her head coach, Nate Norman, but she started on the back line tonight for the Irish. Moments like this give the Irish an opportunity to get a lot of numbers forward. Charlie Codd, the goal scorer for Notre Dame, number nine. Her third goal of the season. Coming into this match with something to prove. You feel North Carolina in particular sensing that. Conceding the lead in a match. They'll feel they've dominated. But have they done enough on this end? Have they found enough to be dangerous? And Notre Dame doing just enough to stay in it. Fighting back more in this second half. Mercado and Cod. Two woman game for Notre Dame. And one thing to monitor too is Macy Bell. Seems to be laboring a bit more in the middle of the field of that back line for North Carolina. She didn't play in the last match. She's been trying to come back from an injury. Didn't expect her to be able to go more than about 30 minutes and a half. And she started this second half for North Carolina. Pruta will go all the way back to Emmy Allen. Ooh, just one player up there is Ospek, but she's causing problems for North Carolina. Now, Savvy King boots it upfield. Oh, it's the rush play, the pressure from Notre Dame that's been the difference. Too much time, space on the ball for North Carolina to attack in that first half. Well. They've upped their pressure. They've been able to gain some ground defensively with Lynch or Hostine, Osbeck up top. And it's made it a little bit more difficult for North Carolina throughout this second half to have complete control of this game. And in fact, at times, you have to give Notre Dame credit because they've won the second ball, and that's allowed them to have more of the control in terms of possession at times.
Moxley. Darlene. Not quite on the same page. Moxley curling back. Well, North Carolina got the scoring started in this one. The 18th minute started off the corner kick. Well, and, and Macy Bell does so well to keep that ball alive initially. And then it'd be Patterson that puts it away to put North Carolina up one zero at home. And then the first opportunity to get into the attack. Notre Dame, they get numbers going forward. They find some of the wide areas. And then it's Cod that makes it 1-1 in the last few minutes of that first half. And that's how it would stand so far. And really Notre Dame worked their way into this game. Got a belief, more confidence from that goal and have it back down in the second half. Charlie Codd replaced by Christina Lynch for Notre Dame. And Fossey replacing Darlene. Mercado has Lynch calling for in the middle, is tripped up. This will be a free kick, and this could be interesting for Notre Dame. Gatino has really Wonderful delivery. She's also a great target, so we'll see what the Irish opt to do. Well, Mercado has been the difference maker in this second half. Putting herself in great positions, defending, disrupting play, drawing the foul, and as you mentioned, now gets to stand over this one, and you have Gatino in the box. You have Lynch that can get on the end of this. Cleeky as well. Ava Gatino already a career high four goals on the season. She's won most of the balls in the air defensively for Notre Dame tonight, but doesn't get a chance on this one. Putting enough air under it. And look at the work from Fossey, who just came into the match. She is held back. She'll hustle to get the ball, but our referee, you no, know, no, the clock has stopped. The card is coming out. But again, we saw the Mercado earlier getting the yellow card. Just doing whatever she can to disrupt. This time it's Van Zandt. And if it's these players, it is the experienced players doing what they need to do in this second half to at least get some sort of result away from home. Just a little tug on the arm of Fossey that has come into this game. No, excuse me. Yeah, Fossey that's come into this game. But just a stall. That attack from North Carolina allowed them to get numbers back behind the ball. Moxley will serve it up from just inside midfield for the Tar Heels. Bell there. The one they'd like to have had knock it down. Elgin. Tar Heels, as I mentioned, have suffered late goals against them. Can they flip the script tonight and find a late game winner for themselves? about Florida State being at the top of the ACC standings. These two teams in the hunt, along with Pitt, Clemson, Wake Forest. Had a 1-1 draw for the Demon Deacons earlier tonight. Some of the top teams in the conference. And it is the top two, as it's getting a bit more physical now, but the top two get that advantage of the bye. Don't have to play in the first round. They'll know they're headed to carry North Carolina. Well, there's some of the, the physical play. Mercado, the one that's being called on that foul again. But we talked about it in the first half for Notre Dame in terms of being composed and, and calm in possession once they do get an attack. Well, that's the same for North Carolina right now because there's going to be numbers behind the ball for Notre Dame. Bell calling for it. Meza under duress, turns it over. Lynch to Osbeck, Savvy King covers the ground, holds her ground and puts it out of bounds. <laughs> well, how good has the freshman been all season long? So good 1v1, just keeps her feet moving in these situations. Sometimes it's difficult, especially when the attacker has the momentum. It's a big touch initially and that allows for King to be able to go to ground and make that play. Two-time ACC Defender of the Week, the freshman for the Tar Heels. Long throw from Hudson, essentially like another, that is a set piece. Plinky 
and Lynch, both looking for a favorable bounce. Winds up out of bounds. Tomorrow's ACC PM with Mark Packer and Taylor Tannebaum will come to you from Coral Gables as the prep for college football Saturday. Highlighted by Clemson and Miami. That show starts at 4 Eastern. Tori Della Peruta coming back on for these final four minutes and change for North Carolina. Osbeck and Lynch. Can they find the right combination to get past Savvy King in that back line for the Tar Heels? Clinky, good to get her involved. Clinky goes at herself and forces the first save of the night out of Emmy Allen. Not a bad idea to try to spin that one into the upper corner from Clinky. Yeah, a bit of a high boot there from Matriano. Draws the whistle. And listen, Jen, still plenty of time left to go in, in this game. As we talked about the fine margins, some of the late goals that we've seen in this conference. So before we speak too early, even though I am going to say something, is that <laughs> Notre Dame, if they come out of this game with a tie, they will be pleased, especially with how that first half went. But they grew into the game. They got the goal they needed. There's another big challenge. And this is just where North, excuse me, Notre Dame needs to be careful conceding a number of these fouls, has some important players already on yellow cards. So just keep your feet moving. It's easier said than done when you've got tired legs. But all of these free kicks allow for North Carolina to set up over them and serve balls into the box where they can get numbers around. And this just keeps inching closer and closer to the goal. And in truth, I think this is Ali Sentinel territory if she wants to take it herself. That might be a bit ambitious, Jen. I believe it. <laughs> She's looking to connect. <laughs> I like your belief, though. Well, I've, I've seen what she can do. Yeah, no, absolutely. She, she can stray away from her quality <laughs> by any means. Just a bit far out. I think the service made the more sense on that one. Yeah, Bell was going for it, and the Tar Heels still coming, but there was possession that time from Olafson, so the whistle is blown after some contact on the goalkeeper from Della Peruta. And a yellow card for the play. So Della Peruta and Meza both with yellow cards for North Carolina. Mercado Van Zanten have been booked for Notre Dame. Yeah, Della Peruta does really well initially to be opportunistic, get herself in that position, but Allen does so well to also be proactive, come out for it. Olofsson, excuse me, come out for it. Keeps possession of the ball and, and draws the foul. Good to see her up. She was a bit slow to get up after that challenge. But going back to my initial point, Notre Dame, I think, will be extremely happy with this result away from home against North Carolina, especially regaining a bit of control and, and confidence after the first 35, 40 minutes of this game. And the Tar Heels saying this one's not over yet. Macy Bell. Now finding some width on the wing. Fossey. Runs into a pair of defenders. Clinky back to help. North Carolina still hunting, searching for an opportunity in their offensive end, but they turn it over. Elgin. Not an easy ball to bring down, but Tar Heel's still on it. Into the box, and Olafson has it in the gloves. So if 
North Carolina, Notre Dame, Lori, feels pleased. How does Notre, uh, why can't I say the right team's name? How does North Carolina feel? Let's see what they do here because that could be a foul at the end of the box. It is. It is outside the area. Hold that thought. North Carolina, and uh, would you consider this? tonight to have to come up with saving get players into the six yard box and, and look to keep and look to get on a rebound this is a golden opportunity for north carolina and one that certainly sit north can strike from five goals three assists on the season for sent had a goal against the irish in that quarterfinal win in south bend last year going to go Clock still ticking, does not stop as that ball went out of bounds. Five seconds left on the clock. And probably, perhaps even impossibly, Notre Dame manages to hang on for the 1-1 one -one draw. Third straight tie for the Tar Heels, who do remain unbeaten, but can only pick up the single point on the night. Yeah, and you asked me the perspective of 